So good afternoon. My name is Wendy Converse Lois. Today we're going to talk about menstrual cycle and biological clock. Okay. Um, a little introduction of myself. I'm a assistant research fellow working in Genomic Center in Etimasinica. So this is a place I work in in Nangang. In the past, I would say that Nangang is a very wet place because it rains all the time. But I guess this year the whole Taiwan is like that. So I'm not feel you know outlier from this place, right? So um, my laboratory is actually focusing on trying to study and understand the interplay between cancer, stem cell, tissue repair, and circadian clock. Um, so here's my contact information, my email and phone number. So if you have any questions after today's lecture, you're welcome to drop me a note and we can arrange a discussion. So we start from menstrual cycle. I think all of you, if you attended the class last week, you must sing this one, right? So who can tell me what's the function of menstrual cycle? Anyone? I remember you guys did a, a Slido, right, interaction. And then um, according to what he said, that the very first word that you think about when we talk about menstrual cycle is blood. But is bleeding the major function of menstrual cycle? According to his lecture, not every kind of organism, when they have menstrual cycle, they bleed, right? So what is the function? Why female need to have menstrual cycle? Hang on. Uh, to provide the necessary conditions for pregnancy? Exactly. So to generate new life, right? To extend the species. That, that's the main function of menstrual cycle. So for doing that, one has to produce a mature and healthy egg. So if you look at menstrual cycle, you can look at from different aspects. Uh, let's take a look from the ovary aspect. So to generate a mature and healthy egg, you need to undergo the maturation of follicle. So you can break down the cycle to three parts. The first part is basically uh, about two weeks. It's a follicular phase. So the follicle will gradually mature Okay, this is due to the changes in the hormone. So I have some Chinese listing here. So if you uh, feel it's compelling to memorize all of this terminology, you can uh, check it out. So with the increase in the um, estradiol in the blood and also the follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, you start to have this maturation of follicle. And in about two weeks, it's mature and the ovulation will occur. So this follicle break, so the egg can come out of the follicle and then migrate or travel through the fallopian tube. And hopefully, during this time, it can get fertilized. So once it's fertilized, it can land in the uterus in order to develop embryo, right, and the pregnancy, basically. So the ovulation is actually only two days, okay, in this two days window. So uh, once the egg is get out of the follicle, the uh, broken follicle become corpus luteum, and it will be degenerated and be absorbed by the ovary, okay, the tissue. So if you take a look at this process, the main purpose is to generate egg and let egg go out of the ovary and go into the uterus, and hopefully it can get fertilized, right? Um, if you look at the body temperature, the first phase of the menstrual cycle uh, is pretty low. But then after the ovulation, it will pick up and maintain a relatively high level. And hopefully, you get pregnant, right? If, if your pregnancy is successful, the temperature may retain higher. But if unfortunately there's no fertilization or like the egg is not, you know, uh, landed on the uterus and successfully be pregnant, basically the woman, um, then the temperature goes down, okay? So if you take a look at this curve, it actually coincides with the hormone level in the blood. Um, as we just talked about, in order to have ovulation occur, you have to have the stimulation of the luteinizing hormone as well as the follicle stimulating hormone. It had to pick up during the ovulation time and then drop off. In order to have successful environment, nice environment for the fertilized egg to land in the uterus wall, you need to increase the uterus wall thickness, right? So the fertilized egg can lay there have a very cozy environment. That you need enough of this progesterone. In Chinese, it's called Huang Ti Su or Zhu Yun Tong, right? Zhu Yun Tong helps the pregnancy to uh, reach. So there are a lot of women who have some pregnancy issue. Sometimes their uh, progesterone is actually low, okay? 
um, so you'll see these changes in the hormone level. And these four hormones are the key hormones during this menstrual cycle. And as we talk about human and other mammals, during the period, they will have bleeding situation. So the cause of bleeding is the shedding of this extra tissue layer from the uterus, right? So if you take a look at this from the endometrial aspect, the first day of period when uh, a woman starts to bleed is due to the shredding of this tissue, and gradually it will increase due to the increase of this hormone, and hopefully the fertilized egg can land. So if not, then this will shed off again. So the cycle goes around and around and around. So the average is take about 28 days, about a month, okay? So since we know that it's a menstrual cycle, a cycle means it has to go through a repetitive events. I would like you to scan this QR code and type in your own answer to answer what exactly counts as normal menstruation. What is normal? You have about two minutes to type in your answer. So for people who um, cannot understand their characters, here will be like, well, not, not really uh, cramped. You not feel cramped at all, and it's regular. The blood color is pretty normal. So what is normal blood color? Who can define normal blood color? Who can define the regular, regular cycle? What is the stable regularity? Who can define that? Why I ask that is because we're going to have a lot of factors that are going to affect the period, OK? It's great. Let's take a look. As we said, the menstrual cycle is a cycle. So it has to repeat itself, right? So the regularity in average is 28 to 32 days, depending on individuals. Your period will be different from mine, OK? There are a lot of factors of that. Age, OK, you're so young, I'm getting older uh, and older. <laughs> um, well, maybe you have exercise, regular exercise, and just sit back there and type in grant and writing papers, right? So all of those factors may affect that. So individual differences well, will contribute to the length of the cycle. People type in normal blood color. Normal blood color on TV show sometimes is bright red, right? It is a no good for a period. The normal blood color for a period will be dark red, but it's not brown and it's not black, okay? It is the color that similar to cranberry juice or cherry juice, okay? So that's a healthy, good looking period blood color. So how about the length? Well, it, again, depending on individuals. In average, can be short as four days, three days. For the longer period, can be seven days or eight days. Some people even have 10 days period. How about volume? Well, somebody typing 30 mil, basically like uh, Yang Le Duo Guan, right? Last week, uh, Professor Tsai was talking about. Yeah, but again, it's depending on people, all right? And you should not feel pain. That's the thing. You should not feel pain. 经痛其实不正常, okay? Or you should feel like slight warmth. 这里就有点闷闷的, okay? 有点热热的, and that's normal. All right. So for every single factor we listed here, we define as normal menstruation. It's all depending on individual. So if you think that you have a normal period, that means every time your period, your menstrual cycle, should be pretty consistent. So you compare it to yourself, okay? So that's one important concept to have. So now we know what normal period is. Who can tell me what are the abnormal menstrual cycle? In another word, what is menstrual irregularity? So basically everything that opposite from the previous slides is the answer, right? So then I want you to think about what caused all of this. What can be the factor for menstrual irregularity? You can take a look at this. Let's just take a look at the menstrual cycle. As we said, we relax it a little bit. Basically, the length will be from 21 days to 35 days. But can you imagine that 
a quarter of women on Earth actually suffer the irregular menstrual cycles. Okay, so one out of four female friends that you have may have irregular menstrual cycles. So what are the irregularities? Well, as you just said, the cycles can be too short or too long. The uh, bleeding blood volume can be too much or too less. And there could be other problems such as um, the cramps or hurt of your abdominal area. Because this is sort of like the science class, so I will introduce several terminology and we'll go through it. Okay, I'm not going to ask you to memorize it, but at least when you see that, you understand that how many different type of problem the irregular menstrual cycle can be. Okay, the first one is called amenorrhea. Basically, when a girl undergo puberty, okay, and mature, they should start to have period. So if a girl is older than 16, but there's no period at all, and that's some problem, okay, developmental problem maybe. Or you have period, but all of a sudden you don't have period anymore. And you give the test and you're not pregnant. So what's going on, right? So that's uh, absent of period. Oligomenorrhea. It's very infrequent. Usually, one cycle to the next cycle is longer than 35 days. But remember, I said that it's individual that cause the differences between individuals, right? So, so if my period always 40 days is never delayed or never become earlier, and it's okay. But if you are pretty regular in terms of 28 days per cycle, but all of a sudden become 40 days, 45 days, you might need to be, you know, worry about that a little bit. Next one, menorrhagia, excessive bleeding. There are a lot of uh, causes for this heavy bleeding problem, which we will give you some example later. Prolonged menstrual bleeding. So the exact bleeding time, we said that the average is about a week. If you have bleeding longer than eight days, okay? And this longer than eight days is always happen like that. And that causes a lot of issues such as you cannot functional, you cannot be functional, you cannot do your daily activities, okay? Or give you some lightheaded dizziness, then that's some problem, okay? Dysmenorrhea, very, very bad egg. I know several friends that have severe menstrual cramps. Whenever there's period, they cannot go out to work. They cannot even attend any PE class. They cannot even walk. Some people have to lay in bed for at least two days. Okay, so this is not normal. For the detailed reason, next week's Ruby, Professor Ruby, Ruby Huang, she is a geo doctor. You have any detail, you can ask her. All right, polymenorrhea. Uh, poly means a lot, right? So like the cycles is really short between each other. So less than three weeks, or it's very irregular. Or um, the menstrual bleeding time is shorter than two days. Those are considered abnormal, okay? Intermenstrual bleeding. So this usually we call spotting. A lot of people have that issue. So between periods, uh, it should be very clean, for example, but all of a sudden you have one or two blood of, uh, two drops of blood, and that's it, okay? And some people will say, well, maybe it's due to ovulation, uh, a poor run, so you will have some blood, uh, blood come out or something like that. But spotting is a regular problem, but it's considered as abnormal. So then when you're typing what abnormal menstrual cycle is, I ask you to think about why. So now is your chance to type in the possible causes that lead to menstrual irregularity. Wait, I see like rain every day. Is that because the rain every day so you have stress so <laughs> that caused the problem? Okay, hormone irregularity, overweight, good. Drink, drink what, coffee, tea, or wine? So, so can I ask, like, this is your own experience or what you think it happened? Um, is that your own experience? Whoever has this experience, please raise your hand. That caused irregular period. Okay, a lot of people. Great. For uh, guys, your girlfriends, your mom, your sisters, have 
ever complain to you that they have irregular menstrual cycle and they suffer from this. Good, good, okay. So why? Why these factors cause irregularity? Let's take a look whether you get the answer right. We can actually break down the causes to four big categories. And the first one is we call them morbid factors. So we take a look at this. For example, you have some uterine fibroids. Or endometrial polyps. Endometrial cancers. So many of this is actually caused by overweight. Why? Because you have a lot of extra adipocyte, fat tissues. And those fat cells actually we can secrete a lot, a lot of growth factors, including hormones such as estradiol. And that can affect a lot of tissues to proliferate uncontrollably. So these extra hormones, okay? And that, if that happened to be in the uterus or ovary, that can cause abnormal period. Functional factors. When you see the functional factors, you think about some hormone issue. So some of this is actually due to underweight, 太瘦. You probably heard about this. Some superstar try to maintain super good figure, so they do um, extreme diet, all right? Or they exercise super much. And then at the end, they reach the goal, but they don't have period. Think about it, fat cells, they don't have a lot of fat. As I said, fat cells is important not only to secrete those growth factor, but also important for hormone. So you don't have enough fat, you won't have good level of hormone. That will cause some irregularity. Psychological factors, that's the first answer that we saw, right? Stress, tension, depression, anxiety. But why? That should be happening in my brain, right? Why that affect period? I want you to think about this. And factors are related to daily life. You probably experience this as much as I do. If I need to write a paper for a class, or if I need to stay up late to study, sometimes during that period, my menstrual cycle will delay, or it come early, or it come, but it's very short. So why is that? Day night reversal, why? When we can travel before this pre-pandemic era, when we can travel across different time zones, for example, you go to Europe, you go to US, if that happened to be the time that your period is supposed to come, sometimes you'll find that the period did not come, or it come twice per month. So why is that? So some people feel it's bored at night, right? So they stay up not doing homework, but they play game, they watch Netflix, and that actually may affect your period as well. And recently, people like to do marathon, jogging, running, muscle builder. Intensive exercise can also affect it. So you can say, wait a minute, factors related to daily life that actually can associate with all of these factors, isn't it? That can cause stress. That can cause either too much bad cells or too less bad cells. That cause a hormone issue. That cause a functional issue or the um, tissue issue. So these factors are all systemically linked to each other. factor. Okay, multiple factors will affect it. So those are the four big categories. For your information, let's take a look at what kind of stuff that can cause the irregular cycle that people think. All right, as we said about the blood volume, right? Some people have light bleeding. Why is that? Well, if you consider age, people who are going to go uh, undergo menopause, okay, their blood definitely, the bleeding volume will reduce. Um, so they have some uh, ovarian insufficiency, eating disorder, excessive exercise, or some hormone issue, um, or the stress hormone is too high, or um, you know, some people have the abortion, it's not spontaneous abortion. They uh, go to the doctor because they, under certain constant, uh, con con situation, they cannot have pregnancy. So they go to a doctor and literally do surgery to remove, okay, the fetus. 
that causes scarring of the uterus. And that can cause some irregularity problem as well. Okay? How about heavy and prolonged bleeding? So actually, uh, you guys heard about this before, right? A lot of people, if they have heavy blood issue during the period, many of them actually suffer from the PCOS or the thing that we just talked about, the uterus fibroids. And uh, some people, if they have the uh, copper T, that tong T implant, or some miscarriage, okay, this type of thing. And some people complain that they have the cramp. These are the factors that can cause uh, abdominal cramp during the period. So for example, they have endometriosis, okay, or uh, And again, the IUDs, is like and some people, they really have abnormal uterus and ovary development. As you can see that most of us have the normal uterus look like that, and some disformed uterus like this. Okay, that can cause abnormal cramp, and this type of female will have very, very, very minimum chance to get pregnant. Okay, so that's about menstrual cycle. Okay, now we know that the menstrual cycle relying on hormone a lot. It's also related to your stress issue, whether you have a normal and good lifestyle, whether you go to bed on time, right? To do this, to understand all of their relationship, we need to understand what the biological clock is. So we're going to talk about circadian clock. Everybody heard about it, right? But what is it? Can anyone explain what circadian clock is? Okay, let me ask you a question. Do you feel super sleepy if we have class at 8? a.m. every day. Anyone fall asleep during the morning class? Raise your hand. I raise my hand because including myself. I will not blame you. I'll explain why. Anyone feel like if you do PE class or you do exercise, you feel your body is really up to it in the afternoon? Please raise your hand. Like 2 to 4 o'clock. All right, good. Anyone feel like really warm, even it's winter? Your body temperature somehow goes up when it's sunset before dinner. You don't feel like that? Anyone feel that you feel cold before sunrise around 5 a.m.? All of a sudden you feel chill. Good. All right. Let me tell you why. It's really hard to describe what circadian clock is. Okay? It's but if you observe your body, you found that a lot of important physiological functions is actually work by the clock. For example, your body temperature reached the lowest point, that's why you feel chill, before sunrise. And after sunrise, your stress hormone, cortisol, start to release. Then your blood pressure start to increase. So what is the first class in the day? 8 o'clock? 7.30? 以前早自习是7点半嘛, right? And recently we have the news, right? 成功高中, or the high school, start to cancel 早自习. Why is that? I will tell you. Because you are not fully awake until 10 o'clock. Alright? Your body is at the highest alertness after 10 o'clock. And then after lunch, your body becomes best coordinated. And your reaction becomes really good. That's why when you do exercise, this is really good. And then close to sunset, your body temperature reaches the highest, your blood pressure reaches the highest, and around 9 or 10 o'clock, melatonin starts to secrete. You start to feel sleepy. And after midnight, you're sound asleep. This thing goes by every day. Okay, it's go in cycle. And I have to tell you that circadian clock, the biological clock, is not the Western science. Because I believe that many people do traditional medicine, 看中医啊,吃中药, or listen to somebody who had that experience. People who practice traditional medicine already know how to utilize the body clock to maintain good health but they don't understand the mechanism, okay? They had a big group of epidemiological study, and they know that, oh, okay, if you don't go to sleep from 11 to 3 a.m., your liver may have some problem. This is under the normal situation, but we are modern people. We're not cavemen. We have light. We have cell phone. We have LED. And this may not follow a clock like this. So based on this, 
I have a question for you. Why your grandma wake up early? Why you cannot wake up early? Why your parents feel sleepy has to go to bed around 10 o'clock, but you can stay up until 2 doing things without feeling sleepy? Why? Because even in general, this is a circadian clock. Depending on individual, there's different chronotype, okay? Even as the same person, at different age, your circadian clock works differently, okay? This is a very interesting example, and I think uh, 教育部 decided right, to cancel the high school kids' 早自习 is probably due to this. This study is done in the U.S., okay? High school kid during puberty, usually they start at 7.45, the first class, okay, in America. They found out students start to depress, have anxiety, and start to doping on drug, and they have car accidents all the time. Why is that? So circadian biology tell them, well, because their biological clock is different from adult. So they do a trial. If you have a later starting time, just one hour later, wow, their hormone level become balanced. Their lifetime earnings increase. Their grades improve greatly. This is because the melatonin secretion for you guys, the young people, are later than older people like myself. So when I feel sleepy, it's because my melatonin starts to secrete, but yours, not yet. Okay, so individual difference. So how did circadian clock develop? This is Earth Science 101, right? So anyone can tell me what that graph is? What's that? Mars? Sun, right? Sun and Earth. So Earth can go around sun. That generates what? Right? Four seasons. It's seasonal change. But Earth can also rotate by itself, right? Self rotation. Generate what? Day and night, exactly. So how long is day and night on Earth? Almost 24 hours, right? 12 hours light, 12 hours dark. And it's because of this day and night, million of years, based on evolution, the organism on Earth develop this sleep wave cycle according to day and night. So for scientists, how do we know their circadian clock? So we can put animals, such as mice or rats, into a chamber and control the light. And if we don't give them light, it's completely dark, then you observe whether the mice can still wake up at the right time to do exercise. The answer is yes. Seems like, due to the evolution, inside the organism, there's already a clock machinery that tells you when to wake up, when to go to sleep. That means, if today you live on Jupiter, your day-night cycle will be nine hours. So now you know the hint. The light from sun is very important, okay? So if you live in Saturn, then your whole day, day and night, is only 10 hours. So you will maintain a five hours wake, five hours sleep process. So let's give you a little introduction about this. Uh, actually, the first person who found out circadian clock is around 400 BC, 那个亚历山大, whatever, 大地, right? Great Alexander. They try to explore things, and then one of the great generals figured out that, oh, okay, there's some leaves. It seems like it opened up at, during the daytime and then closed up during the nighttime. But that only, that only maintained the observation level. So the documentation, the real lab note that one can find, is actually in 1729. A French astronomer, uh, de Mahon, he put the mimosa leaves, this is okay, into a dark room. Hanshou草呢, they open their leaf during the daytime but close up during nighttime. So he put it in the dark room. There's no light at all. And he found that when there's light, it's during daytime, but the plants cannot expose to light they still open up. When the sun goes down, they didn't know the sun goes down, but then their leaf close up. So at the time he said, well, the plant somehow has mechanism to understand or to sense the light from the outside. All the way until uh, these three gentlemen, Colin Pettenry, Eugene Ishop, and Erwin Benning, 
they really established the circadian biology. They used Drosophila, Guoying, as a model, okay? And they found some important fundamental uh, concept and principle of uh, circadian clock. Circadian clock, the reason can be entrained or synchronized by local LIDAR cycle. So that's why I said if you live in Jupiter, your day night cycle will not be 24 hours. Okay, your day night cycle will be like nine hours or 10 hours, depending on where you are. Um, they also found that circadian clock or the rhythm is temperature compensated. What does that mean? You guys all have chemical experiments before, right? In high school. right? When you increase temperature, what happens? The reaction goes faster or slower? Faster, exactly. But circadian clock will not. Okay? So it will not because it's winter, so everything slows down. It will not because it's summer, so everything speeds up. All right? So that's called the temperature compensation. All right? So the guy in the middle, Eugene Ishaf, is really a pioneer because he's one of the first people to say that if you change a person's LIDAR cycle, it can cause health issue. And he's also the first one participating in human experiment. They build a bunker, okay? In a the bunker, there's no window, soundproof, and no clock, no watch, dim light. And they put people in there for days and to observe, even without light exposure, whether the people still maintain approximately 24 hour sleep wake cycle, okay? So the answer is yes, people also have a inside circadian clock that tell you when to wake up, when to go to sleep. But without the light stimulation, you will continuously to prolong your circadian rhythm. That means Okay, so lighting is important. So the definition for the circadian clock is endogenous. Okay, it's temperature compensated. Um, without light exposure, you still have the free running period. Okay? And it can be entrained. All of the above is observation, right? When this person wake up, when this person goes to sleep. But why? What control it? Nobody knows until these two American scientists use Drosophila as a model system. Okay, and they treat the flies with DNA mutation agent, EMS. And they found that once they treat it and they screen for the sleep wake cycle of the flies, they can separate the flies into three different categories. When DNA mutated, sleep wake cycle. One is longer than 24 hours, one is shorter than 24 hours, one has no rhythm. And because this is the first experiment, they mutate gene in order to see this different phenotype. It proved that circadian clock is controlled by genes. Okay, so DNA, gene, like control, And later on, around 1980s, the molecular biology started to pick up and people know how to sequence a gene. They found that all of these um, strains that have strange rhythm the mutation all occurred on the same gene, but at different sites. Okay, EMS okay. period. Okay. And later on, they found that the per gene and protein actually has rhythmic expression as well. And this is very complex. I will go into detail in the second session. Okay. It's called the transcription translation feedback loop. 轉一轉, all right. So how do we do that in the lab, right? right? It's too much work. So how are we going to do that in the lab? We can use light, LED light, bright light, whatever light, even different color light, like Chen Shiguo Laoshi in Life Science. Okay, he used different wavelengths of light to observe this. And you can say, okay, I will put 12 hours of light, 12 hours of dark to mimic what happened on Earth. So then this is subjected light 
So we call this ZT0, Ling Dian. Okay? When I turn off the light, I call it ZT12. Then I can observe the animal in the lab and see when they wake up to move around. Obviously, this is nocturnal, this is 夜行性动物, okay? So they come up to run around during nighttime. Then we can do this ectogram, two days, day one, day two, and then repeat, day two, day three, day three, day four, day four, day five. Why is that? You will see in the next slide, okay? To 记录他们的活动, ectogram. A little introduction, in the lab, when people use flies to do circadian research, they put this glass tube onto a rack, and then put the rack in the incubator that you can control LiDAR cycle, okay? And on this rack, you have a sensor. The sensor has infrared or whatever light stores. So each tube has a fly in it. So here is the food for the fly, and this basically seal the tube. When the fly is awake, it go to the food and come back and forth. When it fly through the tube, it will basically interrupt the signal. So your computer can record one activity. 这样懂吗?就是说它这个有光源吗?所以果蝇它飞过一次就把光源打断一次,电脑就可以记录起来. Okay. Here is what we have in our lab. We use mice. Okay. Somehow, mice like to run on a wheel. 老鼠不知道为什么喜欢滚轮,一直跑这样子. So we just put the sensor on the wheel. Okay. So if the wheel go wrong once, that's called one activity. All right. Now, yeah, computer can record it. So then we can generate this ectogram, as I said, right? Day and night, day and night. So this graph is for uh, the Drosophila, okay? 果蝇跟我们一样,白天活动的. So you can see that the wild type, when you have the synchronization, 你让它先同步化, 12 hours light, 12 hours dark. Then you turn off the light to see the free running. And you see that even without light exposure, the activity are still maintained during the light time. But if the mutation occur, they become shorter. Look what happened. You the light, all the activity shift to the left. If it's longer period, all the activity shift to the right. All right? And then the one without any reason looks like this. So this is the way that we do in the lab that you can uh, record the activity of the animal. So because of that, the three gentlemen got Nobel Prize in 2017, okay? Because their research identified those gene and regulation that can be um, applied into basically all animal, small from bacteria, bigger to human or plant. They all have the circadian rhythm with similar regulation. Unfortunately, Benzer and Kanaka passed away before uh, 2017 or the Nobel Prize will be shared by all of them, okay? So um, I always like to say that you want to get, get award, you have to do good research, but you also need to live longer, okay, long enough in order to get the award. All right, but let's say, if I want to understand a gene that regulates the kidney rhythm, so for example, you are my student, start from today, you do two days time course, every four hours, collect sample. So every four hours, you collect a sample continuously for two days. You cannot sleep, right? So that's horrible. So it's not humane at all, right? So we're not going to do that. We utilize some um, tools that we can have from the nature. We have some reporter tools. So now reporter can when the gene or protein start to express. Okay. tool? We use luciferase. For example, from firefly, 萤火虫啊, huh? or the blue algae, or this uh, mushroom. 最近很红啊, 台湾不是有发光的香菇吗? Uh, luciferase is a chemi chemical reaction, enzymatic reaction, okay? So from this form become this form, it can generate light, and you can use equipment to detect the light. Uh, another thing that people is more familiar with, are more familiar with, is fluorescent. 像那个绿荧光啊, 红荧光, 蓝荧光, 这种东西, 没有蓝荧光。红荧光, this is due to the electron, okay? So if you don't have any idea, you just remember that when you give that energy, the electron goes up, when the electron release, it will generate light. Basically, that's the idea. And you can use different equipment to detect different light at different wavelengths. Now what are we going to do with that? We put that into animal, we put that into cells. 
So here shows the brain section okay, of little mouse. One has the uh, GFP, Yingguang, one has luciferase, 那个冷光. So you can see that during the nighttime and the daytime, this per protein expressed at different level. But what's the difference about that? It seems to me these are clear. These are pretty messy, right? A lot of background. But if you take a look at this, this picture looks clear, but this one has really bad resolution. right? So when we use this tool, we really need to think about um, the reporter's property. GFP is really long living. So it's longer than 12 hours. If I can use that to study circadian rhythm, I will see a lot of background. But it's strong enough for me to determine whether this clock gene is in the nucleus or in the cytoplasm. So then we can use genetic tool to put that into the cells. Then we can trace that up and down of the gene expression or protein expression. That's the idea. So give you a sense before we have a break. This is the mouse brain session, and here is PER2, okay? And this is cry. PER and cry, you guys will know that next session. But what you can see is that they light up in different time of the day. Literally, Alright, and the next example, not only human and mice or fly, okay, plant. Bacteria also have this problem. This is uh, cyanobacteria, they have different proteins, okay? But the scientists put them into night and day, right? the moon and sun. And this one will light up during the nighttime. This one expression will go up during the daytime. And let's take a look. Okay, so during nighttime, that protein starts to express. And during daytime, this protein on the right starts to express. So they alternate through days and night. Okay? So this is really, really a regular cycle. All right? So then uh, I think we'll take a 10 minute break. Now you have a concept about menstrual cycle and the circadian clock. We'll go into detail and then ask some interesting questions. Okay? So let's think about this. We look very different from flies, right? So our, our system will be different from the flies. For example, in fly, every single cell, every single cell in fly can sense light. But we can't, okay? We and other mammals only have a small population of cells that can sense light. This is a very specialized cell. Very, very, very small population, called IPRGC. This neuron, the ganglion cells, are the only one that can transmit light signal to the neuron in the SCN. SCN, Chinese,叫做这个上视丘,whatever,和的,right?我会跟你们讲这种。Anyway,它是在这个海马回下面那边,okay?然后呢,它有大概20,000neurons,有两万颗神经细胞. Those20,000neurons are the key. The four in the master clock, okay, 主时钟, So what happened is, when the light signal comes in, the glutamate will be released from the IPRGC and initiate a lot of signal transduction. To regulate the neurons in the SCN to drive the TTF out. Okay. So here comes the molecular biology part, okay? Very similar. Very similar for all the organisms who have circadian clock, but the name of the gene and the protein are different. All right. For people and mice, it's pretty similar. A lot of homologs, very similar. So for the circadian clock, this graph showing nucleus, 细胞核, on the outside is 细胞子, okay, cytoplasm. And this side showing the daytime, 白天, this side showing the nighttime, 晚上, okay. So inside of your cell, almost every single cell, almost, there are two important transcription factors and their family, female and clock. Female and clock are good friends. They can hold hands together and then bind to the promoter of a target gene. 
基因转录，就是说我有 transcription factor 转录因子，我会先去坐在一个基因的启动子上面。那基因的启动子坐上去之后，它才能够去 recruit 其他的这些蛋白质来这边，帮助表达下游的基因。OK， that 就是 different transcription factor， 它有不同的 specific DNA sequence。他要去认 ，for b m o and quad， 他们认的是 e boxes， OK， G A G C C C。那他们 bind 上去之后呢 ，the downstream target will be expressed。the downstream including cryptochrome and period。right， this happened during the daytime。so then protein is synthesized in the cytoplasm。OK， 他们是在这个细胞质做做蛋白的。so then the protein level will be accumulated。OK， during the daytime。and when the level is high enough， they will be modified。OK， by phosphorylation by enzyme。Kinases， 呃，他们会被磷酸化，磷酸化之后，他们就可以进出核。OK， 在细胞里面的修饰是这样子的。So then the whole thing around night time will go into the nucleus. Once the p e r q u i d e complex are in the nucleus, they can inhibit their own expression by moving away b m o and clock. 所以他们自己把自己的基因表达关掉了。OK， at night time. So you think about it. At night time, there's no new gene expressed, so no new protein synthesized, right? 就不会有新的基因表达，不会有新的蛋白。Then existing proteins, 那本来就表达这些 old 呃旧的蛋白呢 ，they were gradually degraded, okay, through different mechanism. 有很多不同的机制，然后把它降解掉。So approximately during the daytime, 就从 night time 它把自己关掉之后，然后慢慢降解，慢慢降解 ，until the next day, the negative complex. Are gone, so then b m o and clock can once again activate their expression. So, 白天他们表达，晚上自己把自己关掉降解，然后白天又开始表达。This form the rhythm, okay? So then gradually people found out that other than this central machinery to drive the circadian clock, there's additional clock genes that can help to stabilize the central clock. And recently, you know that there are a lot of people doing big data, doing sequencing. Proteomic, 哦，蛋白质体学啊，基因等等什么定序啊，一堆的。So then they found out that circadian clock regulate a lot of gene. Okay, give you an example. In a given cell or a given tissue, okay, 你一颗细胞里面或是一个组织里面 ，ten percent 百分之十的 RNA is regulated by circadian clock. Ten percent of the protein is regulated by circadian clock. But that RNA and protein are not overlap. That means the circadian regulation for RNA and protein are very complicated. So if you take a whole organism into account, 50% of your gene expressed in your body is regulated by circadian clock. 50%. Okay, think about this. And this circadian clock output regulate what? Your sleep wave cycle, your hormone oscillation, body temperature, cell cycle, metabolism, your immune function. When you feel hungry, when you need to eat, and even epigenetic, 这个遗传表观学怎么样修饰 DNA， 都跟 circadian clock 相关。OK， 所以你可以想 ，if you disrupt your circadian clock, what will happen? Right? 啊，有人讲 ，I feel depressed, I feel stressed, I feel angry. Yes, that's true. OK. Any of you like to watch Animal Planet or National Geographic? 有人喜欢看动物频道吗？就是。Different season, the animal behave differently, right? It's a 发情期啊，交配期啊 They behave really aggressively. They fight. They do whatever. It's because the infrared rhythm, due to the seasonal change, 因为你太阳照地球的那个纬度的地方不一样嘛，所以你的日照长短不同，对不对 ？That actually affect animals' hormone. How about circadian? 我们的日夜 They actually control a whole bunch of genes that regulate your neurotransmitter metabolism. 他们去调控你的这些神经传导物质的代谢。So they found some important genes that regulate by circadian clock. If you disrupt it, that will cause problem. The individual has disrupted circadian clock will have hostility, very impulsive, cheating, anxiety, depression issue. 可是有很多精神的状况其实是跟这个 circadian clock 有相关的。Uh, for example, we can do that in the lab. We use rat, right? And you can see that the master clock in the brain, if you give them light dark cycle, 12 hours light, 12 hours dark, they live happily. Their activity is very normal. Okay, they're good. But if you shorten their light dark cycle, what happens? 
their master clock itself start to desynchronize. 他们就自己跟自己就没有办法 synchronize. Look at their activity. 好像没有一个 fixed pattern, right? 乱七八糟的 And the red looks depressed. 你说老师 how do you tell the red depressed or not? You can, okay? So for example, red mice like to chase around each other to play. Those red sit at the corner, 不动 Alright, um, some rats and some mice, a normal one, you lift up their tail, 你把它尾巴抓起来 they will try to escape, 他们会卷起来想要咬你然后跑走 This type of depressed animal, 他们就是累在那边随便你弄 OK, so it's very time depressed, OK, so that's how people can tell, alright So remember, um, this also happened in human Here is a big study in UK They studied 90,000 people, aged from 37 to 73 They have to define what is normal circadian rhythm, what is not, right? So, they define it very simply. If you have normal circadian rhythm, then you should sleep when you sleep, should wake up when you wake up, is healthy. But if you do not have regular circadian rhythm, what you will do? You will be very active. 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 You will be very People who has disrupted circadian rhythm, they have higher risk to develop mental illness. Six percent higher chance to develop depression. Eleven percent higher chance to develop bipolar problem. Okay, 这个还蛮严重的哦。六 percent 的人会产生忧郁症哦。Okay, so this happened both in animal and human. All right. So remember, I told you every single tissue in your body almost. Has circadian clock, right? 大部分你的 tissue 都有生理时钟。那在 tissue 里的生理时钟是干嘛的呢？好，它是帮助你 tissue function 的。OK， so 你的手上面的皮肤啊，你的眼睛里、你的耳朵、你的肠胃道、你的卵巢 ，OK， 你的睾丸这些东西，其实它都有它的 circadian clock。All right， but for what？ 它有不同的 function。All right， 我们。这个举几个例子看一下，你有没有经验 ？When you get hurt during the daytime, wound healing is faster. But if you get hurt at night time, it takes a while to fix. 有这种经验吗？早上划伤跟晚上划伤愈合的时间不一样。有哦，因为真的是有人做这个研究哦。They found that if you get burned at night, it takes 28 days to heal. But if you get burned during the day, only 17 days. Or maybe you will say that if you, you know, stay up really late recently, somehow the algae you have on your skin never heal. 你如果熬夜作息不正常，你的伤口就很难愈合。你可以观察一下，这是真的。好 ，This is because the guys, the fibroblasts that in charge in wound healing, 就是通常是这个纤维母细胞在负责伤口愈合的。Their circadian rhythm, okay, control them when to move faster, when not to move faster. So you, you, 晚上画一刀跟白天画一刀，白天画一刀的时候，那个时间点，他们刚好可以很快的被 activate， 然后爬过去就伤口愈合。好，这很有趣的。Another example, 哎，这个我很喜欢。So this is about your GI tract, okay? GI tract, 你的肠胃道 is very complicated, right? You have your GI tract, and you also have a lot of bacteria in there. Right, your 益生菌啊，不好的菌啊，坏菌什么东西都在里面。That's microbiota, okay, inside the gut. Then this is very complicated because you have your own circadian clock in the brain, right? 你日夜会有这 circadian clock, the master master clock 在这边。The gut 又有 gut clock. 外来的这些 microbiota 有他们自己的 clock. So you have to coordinate with each other in order to have healthy gut, right? So what they did is this: they put mice into a germ-free environment. Completely no bacteria in the gut. They give the mice low-fat diet or high-fat diet. No matter what, the circadian is not disrupted during the, between brain and liver, and the mice are pretty skinny. But it's not likely going to happen in normal life, right? So, conventionally, when they have the microbiota, microbiota can be affected by what you eat. When you eat something, your microbiota will be what you eat. You eat healthy, it is good bacteria. 吃的不健康 ，high fat high sugar， 你的菌相就是坏的，就胀气啊，什么发炎啊等等状况 ，right？ So they give this type of mice low fat diet, and you can take a look at the microbiota. The circadian rhythm is good. They generate good signal, 
and the brain and liver circadian clock can be synchronized and the mice are lean. But if you give the mice high fat diet, high sugar diet, this can generate short chain fatty acid. That will affect liver circadian clock. Affect liver circadian clock, this is a big issue, right? Because your enzyme so in the gansang circadian clock is not good and they synchronize with your brain clock, and they found that a lot of mice become really fat. So this is very interesting how circadian clock involved in your mental, involving your wound healing, involving your gut health, because this is also true in human. Okay? If you are healthy with normal lifestyle, regular lifestyle, your brain clock will be synchronized with your GI tract and your gut. But if you have ship work, so for example, doctors, nurses, flight attendants, 这些要职业班的人, 常常职业班, 然后日班夜班当颠倒的人, or 大学生, 常常熬夜, 不知道干嘛, 然后或者是, 诶, 睡得很晚, 或干嘛, 常常颠倒来颠倒去, 叫做social jet lag. 这样子呢, 你, 你会不会有觉得, when you stay up, you want to eat something, 想要吃宵夜嘛, 对不对? 哦, listen, 你吃宵夜的时间跟你的大脑的时刻天快不合啊, Okay. At night time, you guys wake up. Then you eat something. You wake up your GI tract clock. So they just synchronize. They synchronize. So what happens? What thing? The circadian clock is synchronized. So the gut has some problem. You have inflammation. You start to fatigue. Okay. Your abdominal pain. Then a lot of problems. To the end, severely will be colon cancer. Okay. We have a lot of evidence in cell and mice. This could be true. So watch out for that. 那老师讲那么多啊, ovary嘞, 我的menstrual cycle嘞, alright, let's take a look, oh, 这是那个中文, 是交叉上合, SCN, okay, so in the brain, your circadian master clock is here, it regulates a lot of things, not only the BMO1 clock per and cry expression, right, as we said, that at least 10% of gene, 10% of protein in different tissue has circadian regulation, so take a look, the circadian clock in the brain regulates two important factors, AVP, and VIP, okay. they will act on the gonadotrophin receptor uh, neurons. Okay. So then, you have to know, this is circadian regulator. And this is important because when they regulate the GnRH to release, and then that will stimulate the gonadotrophs. Okay? And what's that important about? It will secrete LH and FSH. They release LH and FSH to ovary or to testis, guys. Okay? And then this organ will feed back the estrogen, progesterone, or testosterone, okay? And for ovary per se, from this regulation, it will secrete estrogen and progesterone to the uterus to regulate your menstrual cycle, all right? So, circadian clock, 跟月经有没有关系? From hormone aspect, 这个地方是它的关联. And as I said, the tissue has tissue clock. So in your ovary, or testis, your circadian clock actually regulates a lot of tissue-specific function. So, for example, your ovary, the key is to do ovulation, right? Generate egg. A lot of important enzymes or steroids were synthesized, regulated by circadian clock. So you disrupt circadian clock here, you disrupt this hormone regulation, you disrupt the hormone regulation, you disrupt the tissue-specific clock in the ovary. So now, you know the menstrual cycle depending on this hormone, and you know that the hormone is regulated by the menstrual clock through this gonadotrophin, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now we're going to do something more fun. Please answer this question. What are the reasons for not sleeping well before menstruation? 月经前睡不好, so please scan this QR code and type in your question, I mean your answer. Okay, 
Good. So, so obviously, people, most people think that PMS and hormone changes are probably a disrupt in the circadian clock. Good, but why? Why is that? Hormone sounding. <laughs> okay. All right, so before we go in there, I'm going to tell you circadian clock and sleep. As we talk about this, we know that melatonin, uh, melatonin right, this is a key, right? It's basically secreted around 9 or 10 o'clock in the night time. So if you took, take a look at this, the blue one is 12 hours LIDAR cycles as control. Then you can see that the melatonin level in the blood goes up and down. And the peak is really sharp. The level changes is really dramatic. All right? But if you take a look at the animal in constant darkness, in black, uh, or in the light condition, what you can see, first, the peak level and the trough level reduce, right? The amplitude reduce. And then the peak time, peak time shift, it's different from the control, okay? So if you have light exposure, that will change your melatonin level, okay? So I sort of answer your question during the recess, okay? All right, now, how about we have regular um, LiDAR cycle and we turn off the light to see the free running? What will happen if I give the animal a pulse of light? What will happen to you, right? You can basically tell your mom, stop doing that because it's not good. Okay, huh? Look at the uh, blue one. It's supposed to be like this, right? But then if you have a pause, sorry, the black one is a control. If I have a pause, and pause for like 45 minutes, it changes the melatonin level. The longer the light exposure, the more dramatic the changes will be. So in the melatonin secretion will secretion different. So that links to this, why? Because insomnia, sleep disturbance, is related to melatonin level. And people who suffer from PMS or PMDD, their melatonin level is very different, okay? So the research tell you people who have PMDD, they don't know why. But most evidence suggests that maybe the hormone changes. So somebody answered that, right? So if the hormone changes and the changes are abnormal, and they have some problem, they'll control the physical or emotional discomfort and therefore not going to sleep well. And usually, sleep issue in PMDD is not only insomnia. Some people have narcolepsy. Okay, this is um, a problem. Um, could be due to hormone, could be due to melatonin. It's not really solved yet. Okay? But usually, usually, uh, this type of symptoms only occur two to three days before the period. After the period's on, then people recovered. Okay? Just give you an example, a lot of people doing this research, especially uh, people in medical school, okay? People found that lutein is important factors for PMDD, okay? It can also contribute to the sleep. So then, if sleep is the issue, I don't know whether uh, the girls here ever heard of something that people, yeah, a lot of people say that, and a lot of people think this is the issue, but it's actually not, okay? It's not because of the neuron or sympathetic nerves issue. It's probably due to the hormone changes, okay, that cause the PMDD syndrome. And then we have to come back to the sleep, right? As I said, that PMDD patients their melatonin level is very different from the normal healthy female. As you can see here, the control uh, during the follicular phase versus the lutein phase, you can see that the melatonin level are pretty similar and peak at the same time. 
，它的 melatonin 的 level 其实是一样的 ，level 也很好 ，OK。但是如果是有 PMDD symptom 的人呢，好 ，if you take a look at the follicular phase， 你看哈，这个健康的 control 是黑色的，灰色的是这个有 PMDD 的 patient。Melatonin level in the blood is very different, and then the peak time is shift a little bit. Same as the luteal phase. Okay, so if you line them up, actually PMDD patient, uh, during the FP and LP, 他们的那个 melatonin peaking level 事实上是有变化的 So level is not enough, and the shift. That's why the sleep is disrupted. Okay, based on the circadian point of view. Alright, 这不是那个 advertisement 哈，我不是要卖书。Uh, I found it very really interesting. Okay, when I put in Yue Jing and I found this. Why? Many people will look at the sun, the sign, the sun, 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 Think that it's probably not likely to happen uh, because you can look at the moon and say, "Oh, okay, I'm gonna have period tomorrow," right? But, but some people well think that it's possible, and seven percent of the people think that it's likely because they have experience. Let's take a look at this. Actually, in 4 BC, Aristotle already said. That the menses tend to occur naturally during the waning moon. For this time of the month is colder and more humid because of the wasting and disappearance of the moon. 那个古早人他觉得是跟月相有关系。Okay, but why? Well, it takes moon 27 days, right, to orbit around the Earth. And if you take a look at this. Um, the, the light, okay, and then the shape of the moon, in average is about 29.5 days. And your menstrual cycle is about 28 days. Somehow, the cycle is correlated. And if you take a look at the moon lighting and your melatonin level, and whether you sleep well, they are correlated. 并不是因为你是wearwolf或什么,所以你睡得特别不好,okay? But take a look. 这个是那叫什么满月嘛 ，right？ 然后有一个这个新月 ，right？ And your your sleep latency, what that means? That means when you lay in there, you want to sleep, but it cannot happen until you fall asleep. It take about twenty minutes or so. 就比较难入睡 ，mostly happen when it's full moon. But when it's basically new moon, you see that you can fast asleep. And this is because somehow in your blood, the melatonin level also negatively correlated with the moonlight. 满月的时候，你的 melatonin level 最低，所以你最难入睡。Hey, 刚讲 melatonin is related to period somehow. Let's take a look. Somebody made this study. It's in China. Uh, they study. 800 plus female, and range from the puberty to 25 years old. And they follow up, and they said that they think it's likely there's a link between menstrual cycle and lunar cycle. Okay. Uh, but years later, in 2013, there's another study, uh, study 70, 74 people uh, during the reproductive age. Basically, these women all have period. And then they see whether their menstrual cycle is correlated with the moon. They said no moon phase synchronization is observed. And any of you have this smartwatch, have app, and you can record when your period comes and how many steps you walk per day and then your blood pressure, etc. So this company collaborated with some researchers, okay? So they can collect the data and then they say, oh, look, we studied thousands and thousands of women. But there's no synchronization at all. It's just a myth, okay? But is that really true? Well, a most recent study just published last year in a very good journal, Science Advances. They study people at different age. 
你的 circadian clock 不一样，对不对？好 ，and they found that if at different age and the people have period cycle longer than 27 days, they will intermittently synchronize their period with the moon. 哎，所以你要细分呢，不统计不是全部拿来算一算就好了，对不对？你要分不同组别啊，做什么的，详细的研究。And look at this. This synchronization diminishes with age. 年纪越大，看起来这 synchronization 跟月相就不合了。那当然有很多原因，例如说 hormone 啊 ，menopause 啦，或是其他的 issue。那你知道月亮的这个周期有两种。一种是明暗周期，就是你看到满月、新月；一种是引力的重力的周期，对吧？你的潮汐的周期。好 ，They found that the menstrual cycle correlate better with the brightness of the moon. 梦会发光吗？是什么原因它发光？太阳 ，right? Okay, sun again. All right, so sunlight somehow had a role in here. And because we're modern people, modern lifestyle, you have too many different sources of artificial lights. So it's not going to help you to synchronize with the nature light at all. So they think that the previous study that showed no correlation between moon phase and your menstrual cycle could be due to many things, including your age, including whether you look at the brightness of the moon or the gravity cycle, but they think the major reason, other than when they do the statistic, they didn't separate to different group, is because modern lifestyle. This artificial light disrupts each body's circadian clock differently, so you don't see the synchronization. So you go home, you can use text at night, and you can 你回去写日记，然后用 artificial light， 然后你可能看书你喜欢看 paperback， 所以不用这个蓝光，你用电脑，这不一样，对吧？你睡觉时间也不同，所以这种不同的 modern lifestyle 造成每个人的 circadian disruption 情况不一样，所、so, 以你看不到这样子的一个 synchronization。OK， so this is kind of interesting. So is circadian clock important? Yes, it is. How important? I give you many examples, right? Uh, the mental depression, stress. Uh, something I didn't mention is actually related to your memory. Um, because during nighttime, when you're asleep, it's important for your brain toxin to be washed away. 就你大脑里面会累积很多毒，就是 toxin 在里面。那晚上的时候呢，你那个体液，好，大脑的那个流体液，它会把它冲掉。那这跟 circadian clock 是相关的，好。那有人做这样子的研究，呃、uh, ，they separate people to two groups, 好吧 ？One group using the paperback， 就是看纸本的书 ；the other group using the computer or e-book， 有蓝光刺激的书。规定 ：before you go to sleep， you have to read book for four hours， 啊，四小时，四小时哦 ，just one month。The group that use the、uh, e-book exposed to light at night， the circadian clock is completely disrupted。Their memory has some issue. They cannot focus during the daytime. Okay, 他们就是学习效率、工作的 performance 都变得很差。好，嗯 ，it's all related. And we also see that there's some evidence to show that circadian disruption or exposed to blue light will cause some eye issue. And there's some data, especially uh from the research area that I'm in. Can see that people have circadian disruption has higher risk to develop cancer. Okay, both in breast cancer, ovary cancer, colon cancer, lung cancer, prostate cancer. Okay, some say liver cancer also. So any disrupt circadian clock, 其实是有蛮高的几率会有 cancer 的 Okay, and then、uh, we talk about the obesity. I show you the animal data, right, and depression, the rat data. And now we know that the、uh, menstrual cycle is also correlated and regulated by circadian clock. So when the circadian clock is disrupted, your lifestyle is disrupted. The menstrual cycle will be disrupted. Okay, so how does it intertwine together? 好，个别的这个 factor 都是有关联的。好，所以最后给你们那个呃、uh, health 的一些 suggestion. Okay, during the daytime, 
when there is sunlight. Please go out and expose to sun. 因为太阳光是最强的 circadian 的 synchronizer. 你以后 after the COVID-19 pandemic, if you have chance to travel to different country, different time zone. Do remember to expose yourself to sunlight when there's sunlight, so you won't be so tired. Okay.、Uh, do some outdoor thing. Use the nature light. Avoid dim indoor light. Because you know, it's dim light. Actually, your this circadian this synchronization is not good. Okay. And during the night time, please sleep in dark room. Don't have light lighting. Oh. 我们刚刚看到的那个 light exposed， 其实就会 disrupt circadian 了嘛，影响你们的 toning level。最好是都不要有夜灯 ，OK？ 呃、uh, ， try not to use your cell phone or、uh, computer at night time that much。我只能这样讲，因为我自己也会用 ，OK？ 呃、um, ， have regular bedtime， try to be regular， OK？ 呃、um, ， avoid bright light， OK？ Avoid irregular bedtime， so then you can be healthier。Okay, but then people will say, "Well, how can I do that?" You know, modern lifestyle. We need people work in the hospital, especially、uh, doctor, nurses. And how can that be possible? That I have to stay up late to, re, you know, finish this report. If somehow in the future your job is the type that you have to work at night, when you go home to sleep, please remember, close your window with curtain, heavy curtain. Create an artificial night, okay? Complete darkness is important for you to have your good sleep, and then try to maintain your sleep cycle regularly. The circadian disruption can be synchronized, 嘛？我们刚刚讲了，那通常是需要一到两周的时间才可以 synchronize completely. 所以只要你不要今天这样子，明天那样子 ，constantly disrupt your circadian rhythm. 而你是 Consistently, 我就是在台湾过美国时间 You will be fine. Okay. Ah,、uh, consistency is important. Okay. So, I think that's it. I hope that、uh, today's lecture not give you too much stress, but tell you how to have a good regular lifestyle. And hopefully,、um, no matter you are bi biological guy or biological woman, right, maintain a good health. Okay, that's very important. And for people who is interested in this, I think this is a very interesting book. In the flow, uh, 找回你的生理时钟 You can kind of read it. It's not 100% correct, but you read it. It has pretty good tips about how to help you to get rid of the P, uh, pre-med syndrome. Okay. Okay. There's my email and phone number, right? So if you want to talk or you're shy or whatever, you can drop me a note, or you can come up now, and then we can discuss. Right? Thank you very much. Have a nice one.